Ah, Paris, New York, London. Many people want to visit these cities and have an unforgettable experience. But how about a trip to lesser known but stranger places? To the village, for example, where only little people live. Or a city built of diamonds. Here's a guide to these places. You walk through the painterly mountains of southern China in Yunnan province. You enjoy beautiful views of nature and a lack of civilization. Clouds gather over the mountains and raindrops fall on your head. The nearest settlement is quite far away, and you want to find a cave to wait out the storm. While looking, you come across a path which leads you to the entrance of a strange village. The village is inhabited by little people. You ask where you are, but they don't answer, only telling you to hurry up. You can't be late for the show. You head deeper into the village and find plenty of very small houses. They're so small that you could hardly fit inside even if you wanted to. The houses are built of clay and stone and resemble small castles. They're fabulous. Little people exit the houses and hurry toward the main square. You follow them. Along the way, you see statues of fairies, dolls of large, multicolored butterflies, round silver balls. The locals wear strange costumes. Knight's armor, princess dresses, green tunics, yellow cloaks. You finally reach the main square and what looks like an amphitheater. Little people are fighting with swords on the main stage, dancing, singing songs accompanied by cheerful music. It's a performance a show put on by the inhabitants of the village. And by the way, you owe 15 bucks for entry. More than 10 years ago, Chinese businessman Chen Mengjing invested $14 million in creating a theme town populated only by little people. So in 2009, he created this unusual village. About 100 people live in the town. No one is more than 4 feet 3 inches tall or more than 50 years old. Every day, this place attracts hundreds of tourists. The residents arrange a spectacular show for them. While this is concerning to some people, the villagers have a job and often better living conditions than they had before. The residents are happy here. All workers in the village get paid about $320 a month and receive free housing with food. Many little people around the country come to this place to find a new home and a new family if they have nowhere else to go. Our next stop is also located in China. This is another very unusual village. Almost all the houses here are luxury villas. Helicopters fly around like a local taxi service. A 72-story skyscraper with golden sculptures inside stands in the center of the village, and almost every resident is a millionaire. This is Huashi, which is considered the wealthiest village in all of China. The population is 2,000 people. Each new resident of this village is given a large villa and a car by the authorities. Inside the village, there is a theme park with historical attractions, a fake but high-quality piece of the Great Wall of China, and even an opera house. The village is strictly guarded, and only certain people are allowed to enter. However, no one understands the exact reason for this village's success. Residents don't share the secret about all this money, and journalists can't get in without special permission. But officially, the village has achieved such luxury because people pay most of their salaries to the state. Our next stop is Germany, the small town of Nürlingen. At first glance, this is an ordinary European town with beautiful architecture and small, cozy streets. But if you look at the city from afar, it seems to you that it glistens in the sun. The entire town is located in a pit. Residents were sure for a long time that they had lived in an extinct volcano's crater. But in the middle of the 20th century, American geologists noticed that the crater didn't look like a volcanic one. After more studying, they learned the secret of the city. An asteroid fell here about 15 million years ago. The asteroid was so hot that the carbon bubbles inside it turned into small diamonds. When people were building this city on the crater, they had no idea they had been building it with the precious gems since the diamonds are hardly visible. The locals never paid much attention to the fact that the city walls were unusually shiny in the sun. 
The streets, shops, bars, and houses of our next town are all underground. This is the small town of Cooper Pedy, Australia. As you approach, you'll see pipes sticking out of the ground, billowing with smoke. There are signs everywhere warning people about unmarked holes. Head over, or more specifically, head underground, to any house, and you'll find yourself in a place where the ground replaces the typical walls and wallpaper. But this is not the only cool feature of this city. Most opals sold around the world are mined in this city. The first opal was found in the ground here in 1915. Since then, people have been coming here to search for the precious stones. There are no mining companies here because you can't find opals using exploratory drilling. To find one, you just need to dig and keep searching. People come to this town, rent land, dig a hole, and build a house right in the ground. Hey, do you like cats? Then come to Aoshima Island, Japan. There are lots of kitties here, even more than people. Cats are everywhere, and they live here thanks to fish. Once upon a time, this place was full of mice that bothered the fishing boats, so cats were specially brought in to fight the rodents. After that, the cats settled here, and now they're considered full-fledged residents of the island. Githorn is a small town in the Netherlands, the place where you won't hear sounds louder than the singing of birds, according to locals. All because there are no cars here. Why do they need cars when there are no roads? Githorn is considered the Venice of the Netherlands. Instead of roads, there are small river channels. Residents move in small boats with a silent motor. This city looks like a paradise or a fairyland. Beautiful, cozy houses, small bridges, rich green vegetation, and thousands of blooming flowers. For our next town, imagine you're a fisherman on a small Italian island near Venice. The island is surrounded by water channels where you swim or fish. But when fog falls on the island, you can't distinguish your home from the others. To solve this problem, you paint it pink. According to legend, this is why all the houses in Burano are brightly colored. The houses here are painted in bright pinks, yellow, green, turquoise, and other colors. Every two years, residents update the paint on their homes to maintain the beauty of the city. If you buy a house here, you have to get a special permit to paint it. And the color is chosen according to a special system developed many centuries ago. I guess this is one place where it's against the law to paint the town red. And don't even try to have the blues here. Okay, I'll stop.